So lately, a lot of folks have noticed that I have lost quite a bit of weight. And while I have genuinely not wanted to make a video about the topic or address the topic in any sort of way, shape, or form, things kind of have gotten to a point where I can't keep ducking the issue and I probably should address it. And just as a little bit of a heads up and trigger warning, this video will be talking about eating disorders. So if that's not something you want to hear about, maybe just skip this video and go watch a nice video about goslings or such. So yes, to address the elephant in the room, I have lost a lot of weight. Since September of 2022, I have gone from 291 pounds to I don't know, around 205, 206 pounds right now. And yes, just for the clearly apparent side-by-side -side comparison, there is a strong visual difference between how I used to look and how I look now. And because of this change, and because of the fact that I put out videos on a regular basis and people have been watching this change happen in real time, I've received a lot of comments on the topic. In fact, in prepping for this video, I found I got several thousand comments on this topic over the last couple of months. And while most of these comments are exceptionally gracious and kind and very sweet and coming from a good place, there have been a fair share of jerks too who are willing to body shame anybody just because they got mad about something somebody tweeted. But overall, I have gone to great pains and lengths not to acknowledge or respond to those comments for some very intentional reasons. You see, because for most of my life, I have been dealing with an eating disorder. What, what, what? And golly, I don't even know how to talk about this. Honestly, guys, as I make this video, other than my wife and my therapist, I have not talked to anybody about this in any sort of meaningful way. And so this feels very uncomfortable, but probably easier to talk to the video camera than it is to talk to a human being. The only reason I've even gotten myself comfortable with the idea of talking about this topic for this video is, number one, I know I'm falling victim to the Streisand effect, where by not talking about it, I think the discussion about it is growing further and further online. And then number two, I realized that maybe if I make this video and talk about it, that somebody else will see this video and it could help them if they're dealing with similar issues. You see, growing up, I was always a fat kid and I always struggled with my weight. It was something that kids made fun of for me in school, and it was a big source of shame and, and embarrassment for me. And over the years as an adult, my weight has gone up and it's gone down, and I've struggled with the body image issues and things that come from like diet culture and all that sort of nonsense. And while at times in my life I could get my weight down to what would be considered a normal weight, it would often then just balloon right back up. And so much of that was rooted, oh, Jenny, ow, 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 that's killing me, girl, oh. Oh, she always climbs up me, but I'm not wearing my brown coat right now. When she climbs up me when I'm wearing a t-shirt, all right, stay down, don't. When she climbs up me when I'm wearing a t-shirt, it is just absolutely murder. If you can't behave yourself, I'm gonna send you away. I'm just saying. There, you can just sit on my shoulder, huh? Oh. All right, Jenny, get that, get that. Oh. And now I'm covered in cat hair too. Clearly I'm so uncomfortable talking about this topic. I'm like letting anything or everything possibly distract me from getting to the heart of this video. Sorry about that. But yes, as an adult, my weight has always fluctuated up and down. And really it was so much rooted in the fact that I was trying to lose weight and kind of quote, be in shape. When the fact of the matter is, I have a very messed up relationship when it comes to food. As a kid growing up, it was like a reward or some sort of comfort element for me. And then as I I became a teenager and adult, it ultimately shifted into becoming a way that I would deal with emotional stress. I would feel stress or negative emotions. I would cope with that by eating as much food as I possibly could. And then I'd feel angry with myself and embarrassed, and that would then trigger the cycle for me to feel stressed and negative emotions again, and then I would deal with it by eating again and just wash, rinse, repeat over and over and over again. Having some sort of food addiction is a very difficult thing to address. Because if you're an alcoholic, they tell you to stop drinking. If you're a drug addict, they tell you to stop doing drugs. But you can't just stop eating. That's not a viable strategy for staying alive. And so binge eating disorder has been this condition I struggled with for decades and really didn't know or understand how to address it. And while there are always negative emotions that come from a binge eating session, there's also the magic of dopamine. Oh my darling, dopamine. That will trick your brain into thinking that it's a good idea to eat that entire pizza the next time around. And so my problems were not getting better, and in fact, they were often getting worse. 
But as most of you guys know, back in January of 22, I quit my day job just to be able to focus on working on the farm and making videos full time. And that move really signified the accomplishment of a long-term dream that I'd been working on for, I don't know, six or seven years. And the idea that I could be able to live this lifestyle where I just work from the farm full time and do the things I love was like a dream come true. And when I came up with that dream back when I was living in Washington DC in the depths of some depression, I thought that living the farm life would be a way that I could lead this healthy lifestyle so that I could one day get eaten by a bear at the age of 104. But the reality was I didn't have the stress of a day job anymore to blame my overeating on. And I was left to confront the fact that my overeating was a part of me and it was something that I needed to address. And so back in the spring of 2022, I started to address it by actually working with a therapist on the issue. And working with them, I actually really started to dig deep and get into the root of why I was behaving the way I was behaving, understanding some of the triggers that were making me do the things that I was doing, and then ultimately really shift and change my behavior in a way that it could ultimately get me out of this awful, awful binge eating cycle. So no, things didn't actually get better initially at first very quickly, it was kind of static. But by the time the fall of 2022 rolled around, I was starting to really be in a place where I was not having as many binges, and the trajectory I've been on from September until now was pretty much slow and steady and just working on myself and working on making sure I was making good choices. And so for all of those out there who are asking me like, what's your secret to losing weight? How did you do it? I'm struggling too. Honestly, that's at the root of it. Seeing a therapist on a regular basis, doing a buttload of journaling and writing and confronting how I felt about things and unpacking how I felt about things in dealing with the emotions I was feeling versus just letting the emotions trigger me to start eating. And please don't take that as me saying that writing in a journal was what ultimately helped me lose 80 plus pounds. I don't want to mislead. I lead a very healthy lifestyle overall. In the summer months, I'm very, very active here on the farm. In the winter months, I do exercise very regularly. My diet is mostly centered on meat, eggs, and vegetables. I often tend to avoid those things that have been binge eating triggers for me in the past, like sugar or fast food. But I've also tried to be very careful and not do it too drastically. I think the change has probably just seemed a lot more drastic than it's been because usually people watch our videos and you'll see me dressed up like in this big brown chore coat for my winter chores. And now that we're in the summer months, I'll be outside in like just jeans and a t-shirt. Now I don't say all of this because I feel like I have this miraculous cure or I feel like I'm cured or that I'm not still struggling with a lot of issues when it relates to my eating disorder as well as my health and my weight. Believe me, I am still struggling. Every day is a challenge. I've had relapses and so it's hard, it's difficult, but yes, I've been working at this and putting in the work and hopefully getting to a better place. I'll also say that dealing with my eating disorder has been a virtuous cycle where I make these small changes and small improvements. And then those changes and improvements lead to other improvements. Like for example, as I've lost weight, I've found that my lifestyle has gotten even more active and it's become easier to do farm activities. And there's just an inherent truth in that. But I also think the thing that I struggle with, and this is why I'm so reluctant to respond to positive comments when it comes to my weight loss is, I don't think it's right to make it a value judgment about a person's weight. Are you a better person because you're underweight? Are you a worse person because you're an overweight? Like that sort of moral and value judgment feels completely inappropriate to me. And so while some folks might think that they're being friendly and offering good positive support when they pay you a compliment, you've got to recognize that when you comment on somebody else's body, they're not going to necessarily receive that compliment in the same context that you're giving that compliment. So you got to be just really careful. And I encourage people just don't talk about other people's bodies, like just let them be. And I recognize by the constant amount of videos that I put out that I sort of put myself out there for that judgment. But I mean, here I am, a middle-aged guy farmer. I can't even imagine how difficult it must be for folks like women who are much more harshly judged by society based on their looks. But while we are on the topic of gender, I will say that being a man with an eating disorder has been a challenge. And I think 
that's maybe one of the things that has made it so hard for me to address my eating disorder as well as want to talk about my eating disorder. Like there is a real stigma to being a man with an eating disorder. It's almost like laughed at or it's a joke, but let me just tell you, it's a real thing. And if you're a guy out there and you're hearing me talk in this video and you're identifying with some of the things that I'm saying that I've experienced, I would strongly encourage you to look into getting some help. If this video is gonna do anything positive, I'd love to see it do that. Hey, cows, come on cows, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on cows. Back, yes. Come on, yes. Fresh grass, come on. Welcome to the world, little ones. How are you guys doing? We got in here. Hi. How's it going? Oh, you guys are adorable. Well, I think it's time for you guys to come out and greet the world. Yeah, they just hatched. She down in the brooder. You too. Now, I don't say all of this in the name of trying to make people bad for commenting about my way or complimenting me. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I do say it for education purposes. And I will also say that if you're somebody who's out there struggling and thinking about these problems, don't be afraid to get help. Don't be afraid of the stigma. Actually addressing the problem and actually getting the help, it's gonna make you so much happier in life. And don't deal with those problems in shame and alone, whether it's binge eating disorder or really any other issue you might have, particularly a mental health issue. But at the same time, don't be shocked if I kind of avoid having a lot of conversations on this topic because, I don't know, I'm still not 100% comfortable with talking to folks about it. And so that's just on me. Give me a little bit of space on this one, and if I feel comfortable, I will definitely talk about it, but if I don't, also don't shame me for not. Uh, looks like we have one little gosling that needs to be rescued here. All right, little one, let's get you some help. After a certain period of time, they sometimes get stuck and shrink-wrapped in here, and I need to help jailbreak them out. Come on, little one, you can do it. You're almost out. Almost. There you go, you're out. All right, woohoo! Put you back in the incubator to let you get all the way out. And if you're out there struggling, definitely take a look down below. I'll leave some resources and get some help because there's no shame in recognizing that we all need a little help sometimes.